Hello, and Wagwan, y'all. It's Dims. And today, we are going to talk about Rivals of Aether 2. Earlier this year, I made a video talking about Rivals of Aether 2 and how it had the potential to take the crown of platform fighters. Now, I'm giving my updated thoughts and how I feel about the game when it, we are, I think, less than two weeks of its 1.0 launch. And just like that video, this video is unscripted. It's just me giving my thoughts, and I hope it doesn't take me an hour this time, but who knows. So this will be your cue to sit back, relax, or even tab out as I give my thoughts on how I feel about Rivals of Aether 2, especially since launch is around the corner. But first, I want to apologize for the mispronunciation of Aether Studios Studio Lead's name. His name is not Dan Fornance, it's Dan Fornacy. I'm Dan Fornacy. Dan Fornacy. Well, no, now let me talk about my feelings on the game as I've been playing through the betas. I've played through every single beta that there is. I backed the Kickstarter and had access to all of the Kickstarter betas. I was thinking about making a few videos with my impressions on the game after I played a few betas, but I noticed that every beta kept changing something, kept updating the game, just ch little changes here and there. So I decided to wait till all the betas were done, which it is now. And hindsight 2020, my thoughts and feelings have basically solidified on the game so far after the second beta, which I think was in July, I believe. And ultimately, my thoughts are that it's a good platform fighter. It's a great platform fighter. But it's just not what I expected out of Rivals of Aether. The game feels really, really good. And apparently that's a hard thing to do because when you go play other platform fighters, since I play, I play a lot of them, game feel is actually pretty hard to nail down. You'll hear this from a lot of people. But Rivals of Aether 1 had got it nailed down, and I'm happy to say Rivals of Aether 2 definitely got it nailed down as well. So why am I disappointed that it doesn't feel like Rivals of Aether, whatever that means? Well, it's because... I'm just gonna say it basically homogenized itself with the normal recipe of platform fighters. Now, I know, I know, a lot of people have been dooming and glooming saying, hey, it's not Rivals 1, I'm mad, yada yada. Listen, I'm not mad that it's not Rivals 1. And that is mostly because it's still a good game. I'm just not really feeling it as much as Rivals 1 because now I have to change my brain chemistry of how I approach the game. With the introduction of shields and ledges, you know, the game now plays differently. It's more defensive because now you have more defensive options. You can't really go hyper offense like you could before. And, you know, it wasn't, there was a, not, there's now a, you know, normal balance of shield block grab where you didn't have that in Rivals 1. It was kind of parry or attack. You know, it, it was it was cool. It was different. So now that it's more standardized with other platform fighters, I have to play it like other platform fighters. Now, I am a little disappointed is because when I started playing the game in the betas, it kind of felt like Smash 4. It kind of like felt like I was playing Smash 4 where my best strategy was run up shield. It would work on everyone and that is how I got most of my wins during the beta. I just ran up shield, ran up shield, ran up shield. Because you run up on someone, they're most likely going to do an attack, you shield it, and then you just punish. I did not like that aspect of Smash 4. I obviously played Smash Ultimate, I played Brawl, I played Melee, but I did not like how you competitively played Smash 4 because this was basically all you did. And that's what I feel Rivals 2 is since the betas. It is a whole bunch of run-up shields. Now, to be fair, it wasn't as egregious as Smash 4, and there's still other aspects to the game. So, I'm enjoying my time. I did want to make a few videos, like, talking about the design direction when it came to Locks, Dot, and Fleet, because it was not good at the start of the betas. But as betas went on, they're, you know, they've been getting little tune-ups and quirks and stuff. So, you know, I didn't want to make a video that was going to be immediately dated in a few weeks. So I just didn't make them. I'm still not completely happy with the design direction that they have for Fleet and Loxodont. But it's hard for me to talk about Fleet's design since she is getting top spots at tournaments. 
so everyone's gonna not believe me, <laughs> but that's fine. Aside from those things, uh, the only gripes I have with the beta is for some reason there isn't a function to bind taunt, the taunt function to a button like there was in Rivals 1. So me playing on a fight stick, I couldn't take advantage of throwing myself on the ground, even though I know it was just there for uh, bug testing or what have you. I just couldn't taunt during the betas unless I picked up a controller which I basically moved over to using a standard controller for Rivals 2 because for some reason, the built-in uh, walk modifier in Rivals 2 does not feel or function as well as it did in Rivals 1. I'm just going to assume it's just because of the change of the engine, but it just does not feel good to you know use the walk modifier compared to using it in Rivals 1. So I have defaulted to just using a, you know, uh, normal controller instead of my fight stick to play Rivals 2. But now with all the betas over and, you know, the launch less than two weeks, it's time for the 1.0 release. And honestly, Rivals 2 is not, it's, it's not really going to be a game for me at launch. It will, I, you know, looking at the roadmap and stuff, it's going to get there eventually, but at launch, I don't think it's the game for me. This does not mean I'm not going to get it, and this does not mean I'm not going to play it. It's mostly, I'm like, I definitely am going to play it. I actually have a really, really ambitious idea and long form ongoing sets of videos for the game. Uh, you can check that out on my secondary channel, Dim's Island, because if I put it on here, it's going to basically spam your feeds. So if you want to see what that little project's about, go to or go subscribe to my secondary channel, Dim's Island. But yeah, the game's not going to be necessarily for me at launch, and that is mostly because the only things to do at launch, it seems, is to just play ranked and just play against people in versus mode. And... Yes, I do know there's going to be arcade mode and a little horde battle that they said is going to be at launch, but there's no really other game modes, no side modes, no lore, and no customizable versus mode options like making the character giant or playing with stamina, percents, all that stuff. All that is not going to be there. It's just going to be straight 1v1 fights or 2v2 fights, which I applaud them for making 2v2 a thing where you can uh, search 2v2 online with a friend. I will give them their flowers for that because that's cool. Now, I'm not saying, you know, they should just come out with everything that, you know, the standard Smash Brothers has at launch. Like, I don't expect that. I want them to take their time. Uh, I just know that it's not going to be a game for me at the start. Only because if it's only competitive matches, well, I need to have fun playing competitively. But like I said before, the game kind of, you know, feels like Smash 4, which is my least fun I've had playing competitively. Now, I still can play the game competitively. It's just that I want to make sure I'm playing the game I'm really having fun with. And what really deters my fun is I don't have a main character in the starting roster of 10. My main's not here. In Rivals 1, my main was Edelis, and I had a pocket Sylvanos. I just, these are characters I had fun with and was really good with. Now, technically, I made my deepest tournament run in Rivals 1 with a Ford's Burn, but, you know, I, I didn't have that much fun doing that. I really have fun playing Edelis. I really have fun playing Sylvanos. I thought Fleet, I thought she was going to be my new character for Rivals 2 at the start, but I'm not the biggest fan of the way she controls and plays. I still can play her, but I have to just always be on point when I play her. For me, she's a very demanding character. You just, you can't autopilot with her. You have to, you're going to be trying harder than your opponent to KO them while they don't have to try as hard to KO you. Now, again, this might sound like I'm just blabbering or something because, you know, you might look at tournament footage and say, hey, Fleet is making top spots. She can't be that hard. Again, I'm not going to do this argument right now, but just know uh, if you, if I was forced to play competitively, I would play Zetterburn. He is a way more easier time to actually just get wins and, you know, just do some standard stuff with. But 
I don't want to just get wins when I play competitively. I really kind of want to have fun and play a character that is fun for me. But that character does not exist in the starting 10 of the roster. So, uh, eh. I guess I was just hoping for like extra modes or just extra features or extra options. Just have fun with the game. You know, just have something to tide me over while I wait for a character I really like to see if I will go into the game and play it competitively. But, you know, that's not going to be there. Uh, let's see. During the Kickstarter, when they showed off this trailer for story mode, I was really interested in that. But as of recent events, uh, no story mode. Now, again, we did not make the the Kickstarter did not make the threshold to get that stretch goal to have story mode at launch, which understandable is said it will be coming soon. But in light of recent information, uh, Aether Studios no longer has the team that was working on story mode. They just don't have the team anymore. Most likely is because, you know, since those people aren't going to be working on story mode for right now, there was no need to have that team. So, you know, no reason to just keep them on payroll because they're mostly going to focus on polishing the game and make sure it feels good because it's a fighting game. Fighting game, the versus mode is the most important part. So you want to make sure that mode works no matter what. And, you know, they haven't fully fleshed out their rank modes yet. That's not going to be at launch. A pseudo rank mode is going to be at launch, but it's not going to be like the full rank mode that they want. So it looks like they want to really just grind out the game and, you know, well, you know, just grind out and polish the game before, you know, focusing on all the supplementary stuff like the lore and all the single player modes and stuff, which, you know, fair. Most people play Rivals of Aether, you know, for, you know, the versus mode. Most people play that for Smash Brothers. Well, OK, I don't want to say that. Most people play Rivals and, you know, rave about Rivals, mostly because of the 1v1s modes and the characters. So that's very fair. You know, they should definitely focus on that if that's where most of their audience is. I just know I'm kind of the outlier since I put like a million hours into their side modes of Rivals 1. So the fact that they're not going to have the story mode and, you know, not even soon, it's <laughs> eventually, you know, maybe like, I'm going to say a year, uh, maybe a year and a half after the game. Just, you know, if the game is still profitable, if the game's still being supported, that's when they're probably going to, you know, have all that extra stuff. Probably going to be a year after launch. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, yeah. But I guess on the brighter side, when it comes to supporting the game, uh, they are doing the monetization and customization of characters with colors, outfits, and all that stuff. Looks like they have a of a slew of that coming out the pipeline lots of colors lots of customizations lots of alternates it looks like that is going to be the lifeblood of the game and how they're going to you know stay afloat make their money and stay profitable which i do respect that and like i said in my last video my hour-long video about you know uh rivals of aether if more uh not if more platform fighters did that heck even if smash did that there is a lot of money that can be made through that through that means. So the fact that they're going that route, it seems like the best route to do. Now, there's also other things you can buy for customization, like uh, freaking the heaven, the angel platforms, uh, KO effects and just, uh, you know, profile stuff as well. But mostly I just care about the way the characters look when it comes to outfits and colors. That's what I mostly care about. They already had a video explaining the customization and how there was going to be no FOMO. So no fear of missing out, no, you know, permanently like t time gated things, which is great. I absolutely love that. Now, personally, I thought there was going to do just a little, a pinch of FOMO when it comes to like seasonal sk events or seasonal skins like, you know, hey, you can only buy winter skins during the winter months, summer skins during sun summer months, uh, Valentine's Day stuff during holidays or, you know, just stuff like that. But it sounds like they're not going to do that at all. Once the event pass, uh, you will be able to get that skin or color inside the shops, which they're going to have two of shops. They're going to have a coin shop, which is where you're going to find most of your uh, commons or, you know, your recolors and stuff. It just has a giant rotating shop 
that's going to they said is going to be new every day well not new it's going to rotate every day of the pool of skins that you probably don't have and if you do buy a skin in the coin shop with the in-game currency it's just going to cycle out and show you another skin that you haven't bought in the coin shop is that that's probably gonna how it's gonna work so if you ever miss the holiday colors there's going to be cycled into the coin shop that's what they are saying while for more premium skins they will be in a different shop uh i'm going to say the prime shop i forgot what they exactly they called it but it's always going to be there that you're able to purchase for the uh i'm going to say more premium currency that you're gonna have to actually spend real money on even though there is a way to earn that premium currency by playing the game you just won't earn a lot of it unless you know you basically open your wallet which is fine i don't mind doing that for a game that i like and i don't mind doing that for a game that is you know treats me well and the thing is like i would want to repay that you know good treatment you know i want to hype this game up i want to you know show it out but i can't because it's gonna be pc only for the start again i need this game to hurry up and become multi-plat with crossplay and cross progression yes they did say that it's on their roadmap for it to be cross play and cross progression and available on all con well they said available on you know uh, platforms and consoles they never specified i don't want this to only be on the switch i want it to be on P uh, playstation 5 playstation 4 xbox and you know i want it to actually have the same upkeep that the PC version gets, which I know isn't easy, but I still do want it. And I know it's going to be in the future because when you first started the beta, they already made you like create a, let's say Aether account. So I assume they're already like laying the groundwork and the infrastructure for this to be a thing in the future, which I'm all for. But once again, happening in the future, not on launch. It's hard for me to, you know, show this game out to my locals if I have to bring my own PC setup because it's, you know, I shouldn't have to explain to you how hard it is to move a PC versus a console and expecting like all like TOs and, you know, everyone to just have mini PCs and just mini gaming PCs of very similar uh, specs is a big ask when there's already a console at most tournaments where the game could just go on but i think they know that but even if they do know that it's still an issue that i have with the game which will be solved later on hopefully most likely fingers crossed and plus i do know that the reason why they're holding out on like cross platform and stuff you know, aside from like the logistics of it, like maybe they don't have people to like properly manage the translations to different consoles. But let's just think about it on the base level. The initial game that's coming out on PC Steam is not fully featured yet. They don't have the, you know, full ranked mode yet. They probably want that. They pr And, you know, like they said in their uh, Q&A currently in their video, they are they, when they ship on consoles and stuff. They do want to have a fully working rank mode and they do want to have at least chapter one of the story mode done. But as I said before, with what happened with uh, story mode, we're probably going to be waiting a year plus until it gets done, which is fine, but still reinforces the fact that this game is gonna, not going to be the game I want it to be on launch, but it will get there eventually. But I am still going to do my ambitious ideas for the game. You know, check my second channel, Dim's Island, link in the description. But yeah, uh, ultimately, that's just my feelings on Rivals 2. The game is going to become playable within a few days. The full release is in less than two weeks. And I'm excited for its future. <laughs> I, I'm technically not excited for 1.0. But I am definitely excited for its future, and I do hope the game is going to get its support. Until then, I guess I still will be playing the game some to, you know, uh, to make sure I'm able to accomplish my ambitious project. Uh, check the second channel. <laughs> I'm gonna keep. I'm going to keep saying that because it's not a giant big project, 
well for me it is but for everyone else it's gonna be like oh that's cool that you're doing that i i love that someone's doing that but you know it's going to take a lot of my time uh i think that will do it for me this video has been about 20 minutes that's that's a, that's a really good cut down and you know uh anything else I guess the last thing is uh, on their roadmap, they are trying to get at least four characters f a year. You know, this will just include like maybe some returning characters, maybe other characters that was mentioned in the Aether lore, as well as just brand new characters. But, you know, overall, they're trying to shoot for bringing out four characters a year, which means I might have a main in a year uh, yeah yeah okay so uh, let me end the video right here uh thank you all for watching or listening or what have you i hope you all have a great one